Hi guys, Dustin Apple back again today. Um, part of my how-to series, we're gonna show how to everything there is on a Muzzy XD bow fishing reel. Now, whether you guys have had one of these for years or you're just getting into it, there's a few little quirks that can go wrong and I mean, you need to tune them a little bit. You need to pay attention to what's going on in them and I mean, the parts are extremely cheap. They're easy to re repair, but uh, if you don't know how, you know, it, it, it can be kind of overwhelming. I want to introduce you to my wife, Miss Amy Jones. Hello. Amy's going to help us today, and uh, that way I can get quite a few different camera angles and make sure we don't miss anything. So as we get into this, um, next few seconds you'll see a chapter section. Um, there's going to be lots of chapters to this and lot, lots of lots of things. So, if you don't want to watch the whole video, that's perfectly fine. So, here we go. First off, to, to take the cap off, you really need to, to bear down and hold on the handle and it's just a standard clockwise, or I'm sorry, I guess that's counterclockwise, to remove it. As you rotate the reel over, there's a small Phillips head metal screw. You need to remove that screw entirely and put it in a spot where you won't lose it. Okay, so we got our screw removed and the best way to uh, to get this rear off, all it has to do, it has to rotate about a quarter of an inch. And sometimes that gets to be quite a bear to do. So what I like to do is, is just grab the button itself and give it a little turn. Now, as you can see with our hole right there, we're not lined up anymore. So that should just pop right off. There we go. Now we can now we can see the rear the mechanics of how everything works and how everything lines up. And I can tell that this one has not been apart in a long time because it still has factory grease on the inside of it and it's all brown. So this reel needs rebuilt and that's an uh, exceptional candidate for uh, when we're going to tear apart today. If you don't know what the roto assembly does, there's a good way for me to tell you, okay? Here's your pickup pin, and it reaches out and grabs that line and wraps the line around the bell for a steady retrieve. Now, as you can see, this new one is working properly. But a good way to check and see, this pickup pin, all it is, is more or less a tack that is stuck inside a stainless steel sleeve. Now, here's one of my spares, okay, and as you can see, that tack is settled down inside that sleeve quite a bit. On occasion, now that tack will go way down in here, okay, on occasion that tack will work out just ever so slightly and when it's sticking out, it may stick out a little bit too far and your your pin, your pickup pin, when you hit the button, it may come back and rest like this. This will create drag when you shoot and the best way to fix it is just to hold the roto assembly and take something hard and push that pin all the way down in there nice and tight. Now, that sleeve should still spin around. Once again, by holding down hard on the handles, we will turn that in reverse. And actually, this one came off very easily. I have had these where they were so hard where you had to take a pair of pliers in here and hold the main shaft while you turned it. Now, you want to be careful with that because the end of the main shaft looks like this and there's just a little washer that goes around this tiny little spot 
but if you twist the end of that off, then you got to replace the main shaft. So this is how the pickup pin should look when the button is pushed, okay? It should be flush. Now, if you take off the hood and you're having trouble, I wanna, I wanna go ahead, let me see, let me grab this old one. That way I'm not breaking a brand new one. Now, now I can see this pin itself is out just a little bit. There you go, see it push? That pushed all the way down in there the way it's supposed to. Now, but uh, on occasion, you forget to push the button. Everybody does it. Let's say, let's say you forget to push the button and you shoot, and when that line spins around there, it grabs that and will throw that pickup pin so hard, it could make it go all the way inside the housing. And you take your pickup pin, and, or I'm sorry, you take your your cap off, and you look, and your pickup pin is stuck down inside there, just like this. Now, that's not a real big issue. All you need to do is you don't have to take the reel all the way apart. All you need to do is take a pocket knife or something, reach in there, and push that pin and push it back over. Okay. Now it's nice and free. And that's that happens a lot, uh, whether it's it's uh, operator error or that little tack that's holding the pin in there is sticking out a little bit too far, and the string will grab it and push it over. Now, there are some people out there that will take a drill bit and waller this hole out to where it's just an eighth inch longer. That way, the pickup pin, when it comes back, will, will come all the way inside the roto assembly and not hang up. If you choose to do that, it's perfectly fine. I will say this though, take off just a little bit at a time. This is uh, reinforced in here on the side to, uh, to make it stronger. What I would do is take my drill bit and lay it over here at an angle and take off just a little bit at a time and you know work work your pickup pin back and forth that way you can you can see what's good you don't want to take off too much you don't want to weaken this because this is where your strength is of having the ability to wrap your line around the bale on occasion you will break a pickup pin okay all this is is all plastic and it holds that metal pin so on occasion one of these will break now, I'm going to go ahead and say that this one's broke, and I'll show you how to replace it. There's really nothing to it. Take a flathead screwdriver, and be careful because it does pop out. Now, you got one little brass screw and one little spring, the pickup pin itself, and this little rolling disc. So. To put my new pickup pin in here, it's as simple as pushing a disc back on. Now, I said before, you can run two pickup pins. As you can see, there's two holes here. Okay, You're putting a brass screw in the plastic. You want it just tight enough to where it holds. And if you go too tight, it will actually uh, keep the pin from operating properly. So, Slide your picket pin in the hole, line up your screw hole, now, so on this spring you got one tail is just a little bit longer than the other, okay, the long tail rides on the outside of the assembly and the short tail um, pushes up against the picket pin, so it needs to go on. Okay, as you can see, I got everything lined up here, and I'm taking my spring and I'm putting it saddling the pickup pin. Now, since it's easier for me to show you with a pair of pliers instead of my fat fingers, 
slide the screw down in there and then get it to where it starts in the hole okay there we're started in the hole now with a fill or with a flathead screwdriver take your spring and grab the little tail and slide it right over top of the picket pin there now as you can see it's working properly go ahead and tighten your screw the rest of the way down just enough to where you start to feel resistance okay see how I've got that too tight it's not moving freely back it up eighth of a turn quarter of a turn whatever it takes you want that to, to work back and forth freely there you go After you get the back off the reel, what you want to do is look at it and inspect your main gear. This is your main gear. As you can see, this is what it looks like because it's not in the reel. We're going to take our handle and we're going to rotate it around. We're going to look at each tooth and see if the tooth is wore or if the tooth is missing. Looks like most of those look pretty good. The, the brass the brass tooth in there that's a that's a worm gear okay and it drives the main gear now the brass gear will pretty much last a long time you'll go through mains a lot more than you'll ever go through the worm gear but if one of these teeth are missing when you're reeling in a big fish and that worm gear hits that missing tooth your reel will just it'll it'll feel like it's popping every time you go around it'll just pop and what that is is that main gear slipping okay because of the tooth's worn and a lot of times you won't have just one missing there'll be four or five that the tops are wore down off of them okay and when that happens you need to replace your main gear now main gear is only like about three dollars um you know so it's no big deal all we have to do to take one apart as you can see there's four screws that hold in the main shaft one screw that holds in this tension spring and another screw that uh, holds back the anti-reverse bar there's one last thing you need to remove this little screw on the end that holds the shaft inside the main gears and that shaft is the handle now our main gears are completely free in here we can go in here and reach right in here and pull them straight out now now once you have uh, once you have the main shaft out you can push down on this spring right here and you can see that there is a little keeper ring right there on the end that sits right here in this groove that holds all this together this bearing this worm gear and this spring are held on by that tiny little uh, keeper ring or keyway whatever you want to call it on the end and there's pretty much nothing to go wrong with a main shaft unless you're to break the end of it off and I have done that always keep a handful of these around like I said all these parts are only about a couple dollars a piece okay now when you take this apart don't be intimidated by it because there's only a handful of parts here and all we're gonna do is take them apart one by one and turn around and put them right back on one by one really not a whole lot to it okay so take our little brass ring on that end take our little brass ring off of this end and there's a little washer underneath there we'll set that over here okay on our tension spring here it's actually sitting on a little brass sleeve and sometimes it's really hard to get off so i'll take a small pair of pliers and reach right here on the end of it and I mean, it's it's on there so and then watch 
Yep, there it is, right there. Our tiny little washer. Now, that end is done. So we got, got those three little pieces right there to put on that end. And we'll go back to this end. Now, on this end, there's a little wire keeper. And you basically just pull one side off and walk it around to where the other side comes off. And it sits down in that hole. We'll take that off and we'll take this plate and take it off and that's it. We've got this set of main gears out and we can replace it with a new set. So reassembling the the, uh, the new main gears, pretty easy. We're going to put uh, put our timing uh, collar back on there. That's for that's for our anti reverse. We'll take our little piece of wire and start it with the end right in the hole, and just work work it around there until it goes where it needs to be. Okay, there's one side. There's the second side. There's the third side. Okay. Now, when you when you replace this, make sure that you're putting it on the right way. With if you're holding the gears like this, the hook that's on our tension spring should be facing towards you. Whoops, we forgot something. Right here, this little stainless washer. That rides right along that set of gears right there and prevents this from wearing that fan. So, get it lined up there and... It's got to line up with one of the flat sides. There we go, there it starts. Okay, so we got that back on there. And the only thing left to do is to put our spacers on each end. And once again, there's a little stainless ring on this one to, to wear against that side. And that's it. That's reassembled. So we'll take our body. And you wanna make sure that that main is sitting where it needs to. And we'll set it right back in here now, once you do this, you'll you'll understand. But there's a uh, there's a little plastic ear on either side of this brass ring. I guess it's just on this one, to where it sits in there. Okay. So one thing when you go back to uh, put your tension spring back together, you got to put the the plate in here first, and the tip of the spring will fit in the little pilot hole and then put your screw with a washer back on it I tell you what to, uh, to keep this from moving around let's just go ahead and put our uh, our handle shaft back in place this part's a little tricky now I'm actually holding this up like this for a reason take your uh, make sure your your timing plate is straight up. We're going to lay our anti-reverse bar right down in this notch, okay? And then as it spins around the reel, we want it to slide right down in this hole. Now, keep an eye on these. There's uh, two brass washers, okay? Make sure that they stay in there. As you spin that around. Just like that. Okay, in there. Each brass washer should be on each side of the plate. 
course your bar rests right down in there and when you roll the reel it should skip over each tooth and not allow it to go back into reverse now we're almost done we can put these two little black holders on either side of our shaft and we'll be done now that we have the main gear rebuilt what we're going to do is put the cap back on it and put some line on there there we go now you get her down in there give her a nice little little twist nice and hard and then push the button to make sure your pickup pin slides back down in the row assembly and go ahead and rotate it a time or two make sure everything's working good and looks to me like it's working just like a brand new one okay guys let's talk about drag now you know drag knobs pretty simple to look at you know that way is tighten that way loosens it but what if you tighten your drag all the way up and you can still pull your line out well for those guys that are having that trouble you need to go on down to the how to install your line properly section because there's a very good chance that all your line is spinning on the bale okay so your drag is tight but all your line is just spinning around this whole bale inside here okay so go on down to the uh, how to install your line properly section and that will fix your drag issues To start off, make sure that you always put the tail of your line through your cap. Don't ever forget that, because you'll be retiring it. So what we need to do is take our line, double it over, make us a just a standard half inch knot. Okay, really doesn't matter what size it is. We're going to pull that down nice and tight and we need to clip our tail take a pocket knife and clip our tail okay so we got this nice little knot like that now what we're going to do is take our line and double it over it makes a loop okay Get a loop inside a loop. Now, spread your loop out a little bit more and twist it over. Okay? So now you got a figure eight with your loop down here. Fold this loop over. Now, and this is what's going to go on our reel, just like that. Get this out of the way so you can see it. We want this line to pull against our small hoop. So what we want to do is take this and put it right over top of our rotating assembly, okay? And you'll know right away if you got it right or not, okay? Right or not, okay? When you pull this on there and cinch it down, if you pull this way around, it will not slip. If you, if you got it the other way, and you pull it this way, you can see the line spinning around the main. Okay, put it down here so you can see. Now, with the with me pulling this way, that line will not slip on that main. Okay. Now, the next thing to do, pull it out of there, pull the line out of the cap. Okay. Next thing to do is to put our cap on. Just hold our fingers on the line just for a couple wraps and pull on it nice and snug. Now, 
That is the proper way to put line on a Muzzy XD. I've tied many knots, many different types of knots around the bale and a lot of them will slip. Now, especially these uh, smaller lines, fast flight is not so susceptible to it, but these smaller lines like your Muzzy 150 Tournament Pro um, and your other manufacturers that make a small diameter uh, 150 Dacron, they are really waxy and really fine diameter and love to slip around that bale. But if you put your line on this, the uh, what we call the through the gills knot that goes around the bale, you will not have a slip. Now, as far as setting drag. Now, for this assembly purposes, I had my drag set all the way up. Okay? But I'll take that off to where it's running smooth. Okay? Let's go ahead and pull some line on here. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Now, when I'm fishing and I'm getting ready to set my drag, okay? I'll tighten this down to where if I'm holding a bow in one hand and I'm holding my line in the other, I wrap my finger around it there, I can just barely pull that out of the reel. Okay? That's a good place to start. Now, that's, that's good and snug. That will allow just a little bit of forgiveness in there. And if I get stuck in the ground or, or something like that, or I stick a really big fish, it's going to save the gears in the reel. Use your drag, folks. That's what it's there for, to save your equipment. Okay? Now we're going to talk about taking your muzzy into reel seat and getting it attached to your bow. So, first off, you want to make sure you have your reel seat you want to make sure that this is attached to the bow. Then, you want to look at the real seat itself. Notice there's, there's a notch in there. That notch needs to face up. There's also a notch in this big collar right here, and it also needs to face up because it's going to slide over top of part of the reel. So, shake it. Put the reel in. Make sure that end's facing up. Get those together. And then, I'm going to take these and tighten them down. I notice that there still is a little play right there so you can do some fine tuning if you need to. And then tighten all the way down. And then you want to proceed whenever you get it where you want it to make sure that you tighten them all the way down. Now that we have our muzzy reel attached to our reel seat attached to our bow, we can fish exactly like this. Or, what we might want to do is take an F and D straight shooter rod, this is just one example of a rod, that we can attach to our reel seat. And muzzy has added this attachment which is threaded to accommodate a rod. We want to hold it, we want to get it started. And we want to attach it. It performs two tasks. One, can make it easier to reel. Two, it also puts less stress on the gears and your reel. <laughs> okay, what about spare parts? Now, if you have an XD, a couple times a year, if you shoot a lot, you you know you may have problems with it. Of course, ideally, you always have a spare with you on the boat. That way, you can swap it out. But when you get home, it's always handy to have a handful of parts. That way, you're not you know waiting frantically for three days for these parts to come in before you can fix that reel. Here's a list of parts that I have at home at all times, okay? A couple main gears and a couple main shafts. Um, there's some little stainless washers in there. Those are shims. Um, that's just in case that my, uh, that my main gear isn't extremely tight to my main shaft and 
the uh, the worm gear I may throw an extra uh, an extra shim in there to move it over tight just a little bit and a handful of pickup pins now I'll also carry um, an extra rotating a rotor assembly I'll also carry an extra rotor assembly um, and a lot of times I'll have one of these like in my in my box or or whatever that goes on the boat with me all the time um, it's a lot easier if I have this uh, this pickup pins bad up oh, yep it's broke all I got to do is hold this twist it off there grab this out of my box twist it back on there and I'm back fishing again you can change this a lot faster than once you can swap a reel out okay that's pretty much the extent of uh, the parts that I carry on hand all the time more times than not, you're going to have, you know, a pickup pin break or a, a main gear wear down and wear some teeth off. But uh, that's, that's pretty much it as far as parts that I carry on hand with me all the time. I think so. I don't know if that's right or not. You better check it. Oh, it does on your foot. I can do whatever I want to do. Don't you Jesus Christ me. That's funny. Why is it funny? <laughs> Just so what you did that, it's funny. Who's going to laugh at me? I'm going to be the belle of the ball and laughing at me on this video.